Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani and Dave Korsunski here. We're in Austin, Texas. Just finished up the Paleo FX conference for 2017. We got some really good, exciting things we're going to share with you. Just some of the, the things that came to us regarding some of the talks we went to, some of the products we experienced. Got some really good things. So we're going to give you that summary here in just a bit. So Dave, what do you think? What inspired you? Well, my interest, as you know, is on the ability to measure things and to be able to use data to drive mm -hmm. our health. That's that's what I that's my company. And so, as I was meeting all the different vendors on the show floor, I was always looking for the companies that are bringing in the quantifiable aspects of this totally. because there's so much information, so many sessions, everything from toxic chemical exposure to uh, gut health mm -hmm. to circadian rhythm. So how do you really pull out a few things that can help you measure if you're making progress? So I'd like to share a few of the vendors I met that I thought were really interesting in the, in the self-quantification space. Very cool. So first thing for me that kind of really resonated, because when I look at these different bits of information that I get thrown at me, I always want to throw it into my clinical model. Right? How can I help my patients get better? That's what it all comes down to. If it's a, just a factoid jeopardy thing, that doesn't really serve me or my patients. So first thing was um, the collagenic diet aspect. So this is kind of a diet that looks at promoting collagen, but it also looks at promoting food and nutrition to patients and to people that have lots of gut issues and digestive problems. So number one, if you look at some of the best times to eat when you're really stressed, dinner time can be better based on kind of the, the warrior diet concept by Ori Hoffmeckler, which looks at you know people tending to eat bigger and more food at night. So the whole idea of that is, is during the day, potentially more collagen, more bone broths, uh, even more green juicing, just really making things easy and absorbable with lots of nutrients, but making it liquid so it's it's um, serum-based nutrition that's easy for your body to assimilate, break down, utilize, and absorb, and saving more of the solid food aspects for night. So that's a really good aspect I'm going to work on with my patients to really, if they're having gut issues, work on the more soluble nutrition nutrients in the first third to two thirds of the day, and then work on the whole food piece at the last half of the day or the last third of the day if there's severe digestive impairments. Yeah, so one of the first companies that I found interesting, again, I, I look at all of this information and I say, great, but how do I actually apply that to me? Mm -hmm. Everyone's body responds differently to different lifestyle interventions, so I'm looking at ways that I can actually measure things and, and make them data-driven. So there was one company I spoke with, everlywell.com, and they're doing direct-to-consumer lab testing. And what's unique about these guys is you don't have to go to a traditional lab and see a phlebotomist. You can actually order the kit online. They have thyroid panels, lipid panels, introductory level testing, basically. And it's really just a finger stick. So much like you'd test your blood sugar, it's a drop of blood put onto a card and then mailed in. And there's a number of markers they can test with just through that methodology. So. I was speaking to them about integrating that data into Heads Up Health so people can track it next to all of the other mm -hmm. health metrics. But again, giving people tools to be very self-directed, ordering your own labs, being able to track your own results. So that was one area that I found particularly interesting and I'll be looking out to, to try their service when I get back home. Yeah, one other aspect that really was, was nice was the blood sugar aspect. And again, certain people, right, one of the speakers here talked about how blood sugar can, can be influenced differently with different people. So a banana may cause someone's blood sugar to pump up, someone else may not as much. Now, so there's some different insulin sensitivity variables. Also the immunogenic qualities of food because certain foods may irritate the immune system or stimulate the immune system like grains that may cause cortisol surges which may cause blood sugar to go up even though that food may not necessarily break down to that type of sugar jump but with the additional hormonal push, it may really increase the blood sugar more. So grains, for instance, and other foods may be different. So what that takeaway is, get your blood sugar meter out and really test and see how you respond to some of these foods. As it can mean maybe there's an immunogenic quality to it or maybe there's an insulin resistance quality if it's foods that are more benign like, like fruits and such. Yeah, and I think that's probably one of the more exciting parts about walking the show floor is all the really high quality products that are designed to be extremely blood sugar friendly with all of the crap removed, mm -hmm. grass fed, organic products that you can take with you when you travel, really starting to make low blood sugar eating accessible and convenient and friendly. Some of the Mark Sisson products that mm -hmm. we, we tried some, 
I think we, we both tried the uh, the tortilla chips mm. that are now coming out that are going to have made with, uh, I believe, avocado. There's some that are made with cassava flour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's starting to be some really blood sugar friendly, accessible foods on the market. I think the more and the faster that can happen, the better it is going to be for everybody in society. Love it. So overall, blood sugar options, gut healing options, uh, sleep options, and then also uh, healthy just cheat options, right? We want to indulge a little bit. We can do it in a way that has nutrient density and saves us from the inflammation and the toxicity. Yep. Any last thoughts, Dave? No, it was a great event. Continues to get more interesting every year. So I always like to do a recap on some of my, my key takeaways. I think we hit some here. So yeah, it was a great yeah. show. Awesome. We got more videos coming your way. So make sure you click below, subscribe, share this to someone that could benefit. And again, Paleo FX 2017 recap. We appreciate it. Have a great day.